Okay, today in the shop we have a, it's a oscillating fan motor that they have out on the course for the greens and it's uh, when you plug it in you can feel it vibrating, it's just not spinning. So something is going on inside and we're going to rip it apart and find out what. And you can see it is a 1LPN8 and this is a AC gear motor from Dayton. All right, we got it off and on the bench here. First thing we're gonna need is a quarter inch socket and we're gonna remove these four bolts. Coming over to the other side, you are gonna need a star bit to take these out here. And I took these clips off already, but on this shaft, we had three lock clips on there, three C clips that came off. And you are going to have a keyway in here, but this should slide off now. Like that. And be careful you don't lose. Let me see if I can turn the light on here. There you go. See that little keyway right there? Be careful you don't lose that guy. Keyway there. Alright, I'm going to continue to uh, take these out here. We got all the bolts out. Now we are going to separate this now. If it's a little tight, just get a rubber mallet and tap on it. But under here you will see your coils and you'll see a little bearing and your shaft. There we go. Let's see if we can get a better look. All right, you can see the coils here. You got a bearing here. You wanna make sure that little guy is good. Spinning pretty good. The shaft. The shaft looks to be looks to be okay. Alright. Now we can kind of separate this piece too from the fan. Now be careful, this is really, really sharp here. Can slide this off of there. It's really hard to do it one hand, I apologize. Alright. Appears to be okay. Another thing you want to check for too is make sure you don't have any any breaks in your coil here. These are all the joint together, and if one of them is broken, then uh, that could be a cause of your problem as well. And these all appear to be okay. So you want to make sure you definitely still have good contact in here. This connects to your wire there. All right, so your current is basically circulating here. And it looks like regular, just years of regular wear in there. Um, don't really see anything that's Too dug up. I mean, it don't look great, but then again, remember this is running all day long for years, non-stop. So you're gonna have this wear. All right. Also down there, you will also see another bearing. Um, so you want to make sure that that bearing is seated properly and rotating properly. And that does appear to be okay. In the back here, when we slide this off, this is going to be all your gears. And normally this is where your problems will occur. Most of the time, these gears will get bound up. A lot of junk accumulates back here. Now, when you're pulling this off, it's gonna be a gasket here too. That's more than likely gonna rip and tear just because of the years it's been there. And uh, it's gonna be very hard to try to, yeah, see that gasket's already torn. It's gonna be really hard to preserve that gasket. So, I'll pull this off. 
yuck. This is where all your gunk builds up. Oh yeah, this thing looks... I've seen better days here. That does not feel good at all. Wow, look at the gunk in there. And this is why these things will seize up. Uh, you just get so much build up in here. So the first thing we're gonna do is we gotta get this thing looking new again. We're gonna clean this up so we can better diagnose what's going on here. Before you start uh, pulling all these out and doing stuff, just make sure you get a lot of pictures on where these gears are because these do need to go back in a certain way in a certain order in order for this whole rotation to work. All right, so take a lot of pictures while it's dirty. Then go ahead and proceed. I would recommend getting a uh, some safety glasses and uh, get an air gun in here to try to clean a lot of this up so you can kind of dissect what's grease, what's rust, what's, you know, and then get a rag in there and wipe it up. <clears throat> and then uh, take another photo once you have it cleaned. Then I would go start pulling these out and cleaning those items a little bit better. Uh, but you just want to get a clear view on how this whole thing is assembled. And because uh, once you put these back in, if they're not back in the right way, this thing will never work the same. All right, now on this back plate here, basically these two, the smaller one and this bigger one, this bigger one slides over top of that. And this smaller one goes there, which keeps this aligned. Okay, so it will sit right in there. That's how you know you're putting it back on. Basically gonna flip it right on those two like that and seat it on. Basically, your power is going to come into here, okay, into your wire to this coil here, which is going to spin this, send that magnetic charge around here pretty much, which is going to make this spin. This shaft, let me show you, because that technically would be in there, all right, that would make that spin. This shaft comes through the back here. Now, it will grab, let me turn the light on, the bottom gear there. Now, if your motor is seized, what you want to do is spin that bottom gear and follow the chain of command here up to the top. And you'll see where it seizes up. So this gear is fine. This gear here is spinning, this gear is spinning, and this gear is spinning. This is held in place by that here. So it's a little hard to get that to spin right now because I held in place, but that one does spin. This one will not spin any further than that. This is the one that's seized up. And that's how you tell which one is seizing up. Now, these all pull out of here. They're in little sockets here. Pull it out like this. And all of this is going to need to be cleaned up. We got some PB Blaster, WD-40, some gum out. Spraying it all in here. I got my airline blowing it all out. Um, this shaft here basically was my top shaft, which slides in there like that. All right, this was the one that wasn't moving. So I took this out and basically took a air grinder here and I kind of just went up and down the shaft here very lightly. You don't want to take away any metal, but you want to get all this surface stuff off and get this back to smooth. Because this was pretty, uh, pretty rough. Now, if you look close inside those gears, there's a lot of debris stuck in there. Um, what you're going to need for that, and this is time consuming, but if you want to save money, you'll do this. Get this pick, and you're going to go through each little channel there and try to get some of that rust and debris out of there. Because this stuff is all engineered to just flow freely and smoothly, and uh, you can see all that stuff in there. 
uh, you get one little thing in there which would cause this to, to jam up and not be able to operate. So one thing I want to point out after you take this uh, second gear out of here, all right, keep them all in order when you're taking them out so you, you know which ones are going to go in first and work your way all the way back. This one here is going to be a two-part gear. I don't know if you can see it, but on the very bottom there's another gear. So when you pull this one up, you're going to have... See that other gear that this goes into? And that can get confusing when you're putting it back together. So just make sure you get a picture of that as you're taking this apart. And again, this is gonna go right in line with the other ones. And now they can only really go back in one way, so it doesn't really matter how you set them down here. I got all the gears out here cleaned up and uh, cleaned out my case here. Blew this out with some air. And uh, so now, when I put this back together, and going to, these are in order, I would start with this one, which was our bottom one there. And then the second one is actually going to be your first one in command, because remember, that sits over top of that. So that's just a, uh, a note to remember in case you scramble all these up. All right, so we're going to assemble all these back in and grease it up and start putting it back together. So I got the gears all back in and greased. And if you're using this like we are outdoors, and it's gonna be outdoors a lot, I recommend putting the marine grease in there. Uh, this is better if it's gonna be out in the storms and stuff like that, and uh, you'll have less washout of the grease from water. I mean, typically most grease is uh, hard to rinse out with water, but the marine grease is just more durable in those type of situations. So we got this back together here. Um, I'm gonna plug this in real fast and see if we can get this thing to rotate. Ah. Well, I hear it. And yep, there it goes. It is now rotating again. And that fixed it. So basically what goes on top of this is a fan and this acts as an oscillator which would turn the fan nice and slow out there on the course. But that was the problem with this one and I saved the course about $300 today by just taking a little time, taking that apart and uh, diagnosing it correctly and seeing what was wrong with it. So. All right, hopefully this helps somebody out there and that is how you fix a AC motor uh, from Dayton in a nutshell. It's a little time consuming, but uh, it'll save you a lot of money. Please guys, hit subscribe below. I'm trying to get my subscribers up. Give me a like, I do videos daily, and I'll see you next time.